Okay, so good evening, everybody, and welcome. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. Uh, pour ce soir, uh, pour le, ce soirée, uh, principalement les présentations sont en, en anglais, mais si vous avez des questions en français, n'hésitez pas à demander. Um, and with that, I, I really want to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for finding out about the event and um, coming to find out more about graduate programs in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at McGill. I want to begin with a land acknowledgement. So maybe I should just introduce myself. My name is Amy Ryan. I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at McGill. And uh, I want to acknowledge that we are sitting on unceded territory. And this in Jojoge, which is where I live, work, play, um, this has long been a site of meeting and exchange among Indigenous peoples, particularly the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabeg nations. And I and McGill honor, recognize, and respect these nations as stewards of our lands and waters. And I strive every day to do take some small step, sometimes it seems very small, but some small step to make our, our institution, our graduate programs um, more accessible for all and to work towards the, um, the initiatives that were set forth on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And with that, I want to move on and um, welcome everybody again and start to tell you just a little bit of background about our graduate programs um, before we go into individual presentations. So you might be wondering, what am I going to do? I've, I've done a BSc and I don't know what to do next, or I'm in the middle of a master's and I'm trying to figure it out. Or even some of you may have worked for a few years and now you're thinking, I want a little, I want to know a little bit more. I want to dig deeper into some of these subject areas. So you've come to the right place. Um, and so what I want to provide just briefly before we talk about our individual programs is give you an overview of the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences and the graduate programs that sit in our faculty. And then there's gonna be an opportunity for you to find out a bit more about specific programs. So we have 19, approximately three minute presentations that we're hoping to go through in about an hour. And after that, there's gonna be an opportunity for you to join program specific Zoom rooms um, to find out more about the program, to meet faculty members, to meet students um, who are in those programs and ask your questions and find out why you might wanna end up there. So just to begin to tell you a little bit, who are we? Who are the trainees in our faculty? Well, not surprisingly, we're a faculty of medicine. We have a number of undergraduate medical students, residents and fellows. We also um, teach a number of health professions. So there's approximately 100 health profession undergraduate students and about 1600 science undergraduate students. But you're already in one of those categories and now you wanna find out more about graduate school. So in our graduate programs, we have over 2000 graduate students, over 300 postdoctoral fellows and over 800 research faculty who are serving as mentors and supervisors in these programs to guide you through on your research training. If we look at just a, so a brief snapshot, I know many of you will be here for different programs. Um, our students of those sort of, this is in fall 2022, we had 2,300 students. Um, in particular, about a, they're split approximately a third in non-thesis masters and thesis masters. And then about, we have about 800 students that are in our um, PhD programs. Of these students across the different programs, around 25% are international students. And 60% of our graduate students are in thesis programs are, are women. And we are actively working to increase diversity, to support inclusiveness, and to make our faculty programs really a place that are welcoming and open for all students. Our vision for, for graduate programs in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences is, is that each of these students, each of you, um, and each of our students currently enrolled in graduate programs will be in a supportive training environment that is gonna challenge you for sure. It's not gonna be necessarily a, a walk in the park, but it's gonna challenge you and it's also gonna prepare you for future careers in both academic and non-academic streams. We also view you as students, you are trainees and you join our research teams to learn 
um, how to do research and to create new knowledge. And that knowledge, the research you're going to do, the data that comes from your projects is going to change how we think about basic cellular and molecular processes, how we think about um, health and healthcare delivery and affect ultimately affect clinical practice. And so really our, our projects, even though they might range from something very basic to something very translational, are all aimed at improving the health of Canadians. And as students, we also recognize that in addition to your thesis or to your non-thesis research projects, you also need space and time to, in order to develop both the hard and the soft skills that are gonna be important for the careers that you're gonna embark on after you leave our programs. <clears throat> so we are located in Montreal um, and we're located in a number of different sites across Montreal. So right now I'm sitting in my office on the main campus at McGill. Um, downtown Montreal, but we have research institutes spread across the city from the Research Institute um, of McGill University Health Center, our Lady Davis Research Institute, the, the Neuro, the Douglas Research Center, and the IRCM that host our graduate students. So we have research labs spread across the city, as well as on the main campus of McGill. Reasons you might think about why McGill, why come into McGill to do your graduate program? Well, I mean, I can throw at you the first reason you'll often hear is, well, we're number one. I mean, that, but that's that's one reason. It's not the only reason, but we we have ranked consistently number one over the past 15 years as the top medical and doctoral university in Canada. We have a really vibrant um, educational and research rich uh, milieu in among all schools in North America. And by joining a graduate program here, you are gonna be surrounded by some of the best and brightest um, health professionals and, sci and scientists, and as well as excellent graduate students. As a faculty, we have 35 distinct research centers and institutes that support um, your research and support um, interdisciplinary or, and collaborations across different professions. And if you haven't been to Montreal yet, or you maybe you're already living here, but we're really, Montreal is really an amazing multi multicultural city that is still, I have affordable on here. It's, it, the expenses are creeping up, but it's still relatively affordable considering the size of the city and the opportunities within the city. Other real points is that as a graduate, as a member of a graduate program in our faculty, there are gonna be opportunities for you to be at the forefront of cutting edge research projects. And we really strive and we hope that in your search to find a project that you really find a project that's really right for you. Another thing that we have that, that sort of started two years ago or a year and a half ago are guaranteed minimum funding packages for all graduate students in thesis programs. And this has been, um, I think, really helped to relieve some of the stress that graduate students can experience about how are they gonna fund their, their um, living, their tuition while they are still studying. And we also have many opportunities at McGill and with the, in the individual programs for professional development that's going to allow you to transition from a graduate program into um, academic and non-academic careers. So in a minute, we're going to move forward and you're, before I, I'll come back again at the end, but we're going to move forward to hear from the different uh, graduate programs. You're going to hear short snippets from them um, before you have a chance to enter the Zoom room. And with, I'm going to stop sharing. And Yang, you can start sharing. Okay. And so we're gonna go through the um, these presentations. The, the programs are roughly in alphabetical order <laughs> as we go through. Um, so welcome. Uh, we have a list of you know, start that of participating uh, graduate programs from the faculty that are going to be presenting this evening. And so we're going to start. Oh, can I, should I go or should I stop? Okay, I will start the slides. Okay, so we're going to start with the um, department or the pro graduate program in anatomy and cell biology. So I'm going to ask whoever is presenting from that. Uh, so okay. am I okay. presenting? Yeah, right Claire, away? that's you. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm, okay, I have the slides up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so hi, everybody. My name is Claire. Uh, and I am a, a master's student in the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. 
and I am also the co-president of our Graduate Student Society. Uh, and today I'm going to be telling you a bit more about our department. So as far as the research offered in the program, we have six main areas that are on the slide, uh, which encompasses a lot of diverse expertise. So we have people who are doing stem cell work, people who are using mouse models for drug discovery, people using cryoelectron microscopy to look at the structure of proteins, uh, to people like me who are studying cell signaling in tiny little nematode models. And what's great about having this wide range of research is you get a lot of unique input into your own research from people that are experts outside of your field within your own department. And you have a lot of potential to collaborate with people who do different research than you, which then strengthens your overall project. Another great component of our department is that we have locations all across Montreal. So our main building is the uh, Strathcona Anatomy and Dentistry Building, uh, which you may be familiar with if you did your undergrad at McGill. And we also have, we have other locations on main campus and we also have locations off of main campus uh, in more hospital research settings like the McGill University Health Center and in uh, St. Justin. Uh, you can change the slide now. As for why you should join anatomy and cell biology, uh, in the department, you get direct mentorship from an assigned professor that you actually reach out, reach out to before you apply to the program. Uh, we also have bi-monthly research and progress seminars. This is a chance for graduate students to present their work to the whole department, which I know sounds terrifying, but it's not marked and it's a great opportunity to work on your public speaking, which is a great skill if you stay in academia or not. Uh, we also have seminars from world-renowned scientists, so uh, where the department invites scientists to come and give a talk to the department. Uh, and since we are actually a smaller department, we have an annual research retreat. This is where we all go outside of Montreal, stay at a resort overnight, have a big dinner and present our research to one another, which is very fun. Uh, we have a lot of social events like our annual barbecue. Uh, we hosted a spring fling in the past with other grad departments at Thompson House. And we also have a social mixer after each research in progress for every graduate student. Uh, but enough of all the fun stuff to talk about what's really important is that we have high impact research going on, really cool stuff going on in the department and lots of uh, chances to collaborate. As for careers afterwards, after doing a degree in anatomy and cell biology, you can obviously stay in academia, uh, but it's not like a dead end if you don't want to do that. There's lots of other options you can do with your career. Uh, the full list is listed on our website where there's a QR code and the website's also listed at the bottom of the slide. As for fall application deadlines for international students, it's January 15th, 2024. And then for Canadian students, it's June 1st, 2024. Uh, and if you have any more questions, I'll be hosting a breakout room with my co-president, Travis, and our graduate student coordinator, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Our next speaker is uh, Professor Mario Jardon from the Biological and Biomedical Medical Engineering Non-Thesis Program. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mario Jardon from, uh, uh, I'm from the uh, BBME, which is Bio. bio bioengineering and biomedical engineering program. This is a master's program, non-thesis, so course based. It's a duration of 16 months and uh, the faculty, the team that composes the, the program is, comes from uh, bioengineering, which is the uh, uh, faculty of engineering and biomedical engineering, which belongs to the faculty of medicine. So this is a, an interfaculty program. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, uh, the purpose of this program is to initiate students into the biomanufacturing world, which is one of the, the, the most expanding sectors in industry uh, that relates to health, uh, health sciences, uh, because it is really meant for production of uh, very relevant therapeutics uh, that are just transforming the, uh, the, uh, the healthcare really in, in the world all the way from diabetes to uh, immune diseases, infectious diseases, et cetera. Um, uh, so uh, this is a little bit of an overview of the program. Uh, students get uh, an overview of what biomanufacturing is from product design to the steps of manufacturing and the technologies that are used in these processes. Um, next slide, please. Um, so uh, yes, it's a, it's a program that is, uh, has a practical component. So it has four months of courses, sorry, uh, two sessions of four months of courses, and then uh, two sessions of four months of 
uh, internships in industry um, where the students get a real exposure to uh, well, to real life projects in uh, industrial biomanufacturing. Next slide, please. Um, so um, these are more some of the companies that are partnering with us. Uh, we have a, 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 a very nice collaboration with Sanofi, Biovectra, Moderna. There are other companies who are in, in the program and uh, who has offered uh, internships to our students. This is a new program. It started uh, in 2022. We started with 10 students. Uh, this is our second cohort. We have uh, 35 students. So uh, there is definitely uh, a lot of interest. and uh, We are expanding uh, the program even more. Um, um, next slide, please. Uh, and then these are some of the ideas for the uh, for admission. If you are interested, I will be hosting also a breakout room. Um, if you want to make an impact on the health of Canadians through making available products uh, in the market uh, that are transforming uh, the, the, the healthcare, you can consider seriously this program. Thank you. Okay, the next program that's up is the Department of Biochemistry. And um, Alice Nam, a graduate student, is going to be doing the presentation. Hi, everyone. So thanks for the short introduction. I'll be talking today a little bit about the graduate program in biochemistry. So our research is broadly uh, divided into four different streams, including RNA, molecular oncology, structural biology, and stem cells and regenerative medicine. So in keeping with these themes, we're affiliated with a variety of different institutes. For example, the Goodman Cancer Institute, which has seven innovation platforms to support research, including histology, advanced bioimaging, and more, as well as 24 principal investigators uh, who are conducting research in five main streams, including cancer therapeutics, cellular stemness and plasticity, oncometabolism, tumor microenvironment, and cancer systems biology. We are also affiliated, thank you, with the CRBS, the Center of Structural Biology Research, which has 42 members and um, has a wide variety of modern biophysical equipment platforms, including electron microscopy and X-ray crystallography. Next slide, please. We are also, a lot of our labs are part of the new RNA Research Center, which conducts a variety of RNA research from translation and regulation and localization to vaccines, to genomics and bioinformatics and interactions and structure in RNA. Next slide, please. So you can join the biochemistry department as a master's student or a PhD student, both thesis-based. They are similar in that they both require two courses and um, uh, attendance in a seminar series, as well as for the PhD, then you have to give a junior research seminar as well as a senior research seminar in which you present your research and kind of your research progress to the other members of the department. And then finally, you uh, write and defend your thesis at the end of your degree. And you also have the option to fast track from your master's to a PhD and enter in PhD year two instead to save a year there if you choose to. Next slide, please. Our graduate students then go on to pursue a variety of different careers in different fields from academic research to um, the healthcare sector and the public and private sectors, including um, biotech, pharma, and clinical research, and so on. Next slide. So I'm also the co-president of our Biochemistry Graduate Student Society. And this, our main goal is to cultivate uh, social community among our members, scientific collaboration so that people can work together and help each other's projects improve. And then also we're here to provide counseling, support and protection for all of our members. Next. And we run a variety of events throughout the year from academic to health and wellness to social events. And these are all student run. So one of the great things about our, our department is how eager everyone is to make the most of their graduate degree. And we really um, appreciate having, trying to establish work-life balance 
in order to have a good time during our graduate degree. And if you would like, um, please feel free to follow our socials in order to stay up to date with us and what we're doing. Great, so thank you. And we really encourage you to apply to our graduate programs. Thank you, Alice. Next up, we have the Epidemiology, Biostatistics, Statistics, and Occupational Health Program. Um, Professor Singmi Yang is going to be presenting. Hi, um, I'm Associate Professor in the department, and I will, uh, next slide, please. Sorry. Okay. So I will just introduce um, our, our uh, specific or various academic programs in the department. So the first, I want to introduce our mission statement. Uh, next slide on, please. So our mission is to conduct methodologically rigorous research and provide world-class training to the next generation to foster healthier communities and alleviate health inequities. Next one, please. So we have multiple uh, academic programs that include um, master's, or thesis and non-thesis degrees, as well as PhD programs um, in the field of epidemiology, public health, biostatistics, and occupational health. And also we offer McGill and University of Bordeaux dual degree program in public health data science, uh, both in masters of science and PhD as well. Next slide, please. So I just want to introduce each of our different programs briefly before the breakout session for the detailed information. So what's epidemiology? Epidemiology is a population health science that examines the distribution of health outcomes in a population and also investigate factors and causes that generate differential distributions. And epidemiologists work as medical detectives in local, regional, federal, and international public health agencies, as well as in private sectors. McGill's epidemiology program is internationally renowned for the very strong conceptual and methodological skills. The next slide, please. For the public health degree, um, we offer MSCPH program or degree program that trains outstanding public health professionals by offering a rigorous, again, very re scientifically rigorous um, methodological programs in research and practice. MSCPH students gain valuable experiences through a minimum of 14 week practicum. Um, in a research or practice setting, as well as the courses required. And graduates with MSC-PH degree ultimately possess a strong methodological and other public health competencies to carry out broad public health functions in, again, local, provincial, national, and international um, settings, as well as in private sectors. Biostatistics is the methodological area of study focusing on developing methods of analysis to answer important questions in healthcare settings. Students who apply to our biostatistics program typically have an undergraduate degree in mathematics or statistics. Lastly, um, for the occupational health degree, uh, we offer an integrative multidisciplinary disciplinary program for a variety of students from engineering, chemistry, physics, physicians, nurses, and also interested scientists. It produces professionals in hygiene, safety, and physicians and nurses capable of measuring and minimizing health hazards at work as well as in the environment. We train um, students that use the full knowledge of science to tackle problems in the environment. So the, for instance, the project in occupational health can be performed by students at any location and also on any relevant subject. So our, uh, we have uh, more than 300 students in the department um, covering, attending the various degree programs. And we have a very active and proud student society called EBOS. And um, that includes uh, multiple councils and also uh, generate and organize 
academic and social events throughout the year to enrich our students experience and also the our departmental community throughout the year, such as research day, career day, and also spring banquet workshops uh, and the body program. And I have those uh, contact information for eBus for you. The next slide, please. Okay, so our uh, where we are is we are located in the 2001 McGill College on the 11th and the uh, 12th floor, and our application deadline for all programs is December 1st, which is fast approaching. And uh, feel free to contact our um, uh, consult our uh, website and also um, our uh, student student affairs office. Thank you. And again, uh, we have four breakout rooms for further details, sorry. Thank you. Our next uh, program you're gonna hear from is Experimental Medicine. And the speaker this evening is Jennifer Maxwell, who's the president of the XMED Graduate Student Society. Jennifer. Hi, thank you very much for having me. So I'm excited to be presenting our graduate program, which is uh, the graduate program, Experimental Medicine. So our division offers world-class translational research opportunities um, for graduate students in interdisciplinary settings at McGill University and its affiliated research institutes. So similarly to other programs, we don't operate just at one site, but multiple sites um, throughout Montreal. So I'm located at the Lady Davies Institute, um, but we have students on McGill campus. We have students at the MRHC, so very inter interdisciplinary settings. Um, and our graduate students are pursuing cutting edge medical research in a unique setting where we have PhD and MD researchers that collaborate favoring translational research into the pathogenesis and treatment of disease. So our program kind of encapsulates all types of scientific research going from basic science to translational research to clinical research. Um, and graduates from our program have found research careers in the industry, government, and academia, just to name some of the sectors. So currently we have just under 400 students enrolled in our graduate program, um, and they're enrolled in one of the eight different programs that we offer. So we have a master's in experimental medicine, and within the master's, you can have the option to specialize in bioethics, digital health innovation, or environment. We have the PhD in experimental medicine, which I'm currently in myself. And you also have the option to specialize in environmental experimental medicine research. Um, and then we also offer the graduate diploma in clinical research, as well as a graduate certificate in regenerative medicine. And so, Experimental medicine has a very broad array of research topics. Uh, these include both biomedical and clinical themes, and I'm not going to go through the list, but there's a wide variety of topics like cell biophysics, we have exercise physiology, um, molecular oncology, which is what I'm currently studying, epidemiology, pharmacology, so it's a very interdisciplinary graduate program. And if you want to see more information about all of the approved thesis supervisors, you can go to our website where we have all of their research projects um, and their contact information. So you can kind of see what kind of research is being done within this program. And if any of it interests you, then you can reach out to those professors in order to talk more about the research that's being done. Uh, and lastly, EMGSS. So as mentioned, I'm the president of this student society. Um, we're really there to support and defend the rights, welfare, and interests of students within experimental medicine. Um, we host a number of different social events, academic events. So we have a conference every year where all students in experimental medicine are welcomed to present their research to fellow colleagues. Um, we have wellness events, so we're planning therapy dog sessions soon. Uh, we just try to host a lot of events to kind of connect the students because we do know being located at different sites, we still want to create a sense of unity with students within our graduate program. And lastly, uh, we just have some contact information on the next slide, I believe. So if you guys want to reach out, if you have any questions uh, for fall entry, the deadline is January 15th for international students and June 15th for domestic students. So we hope that you consider applying to our program. Thanks, Jennifer. 
The next program that we're going to hear from is Family Medicine, and it's going to be presented by Tibor Schuster. Uh, Dr. Schuster, do you have something to say before I play the video? Oh. Yeah, we decided to uh, play a video which uh, shows some of our pride students. So, okay, yeah. excellent. Okay, so I go on with the video. Do you have, can you share the sound, Yang? I think you have to unmute to share it. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if anybody else is hearing it. Yang's in the next room. She just asked. I'm not hearing it. So we're going to. No sound, Amy. No, I know. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, The volume. So can nobody can hear, hear the video, eh? Nobody can, can hear, hear the video? You can hear it on your computer? Yes, I could. Um, Do you have your, don't mute. Do you have your sound on? Yes. Um, yeah, maybe it's. Stop sharing and share again with the sound. That's what someone has suggested. Okay. Do you have the, did you select the option to share sound when you shared screen? Let me see. When you share screen, there's a share sound. Okay, so this is share screen. Oh yeah, okay, I got it. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Can you hear now? Hi, everyone. My name is Lashonda, and I'm an MD-PhD student in the third year of my PhD studies in the Department of Family Medicine. Hi, everyone. My name is Anish Arora, and I'm a former master's student and current PhD student in the Department of Family Medicine here at McGill. Anish, I'm kind of curious. When you tell people that you're studying family medicine, do people often assume that you're studying to become a family doctor? Because I get that a lot. You know, it's incredible how often I get asked that kind of question. But at the same time, I think it's a very good teaching opportunity to explain what family medicine academic research has to offer. I agree with you. Family medicine and primary care encompasses a lot more than just family medicine, which this word cloud kind of illustrates. It's about health service research, health policy, uh, bioethics, uh, chronic disease management, and a range of other things as well. Um, you actually, as you mentioned before, you did your master's in the program, and then you continued on doing a PhD. What was behind your decision to do that? So there's actually four main reasons for why I decided to stay in this program, or well, first off, to come to this program and then stay in this program. So first is community. And when I think of community, I think of our student body and also our engagement with our faculty. So when I came to this department, I realized that we have this really, really strong student society that makes sure that we are all grounded and also stay connected with each other. The second is that when we engage with our faculty, we, we actually get reciprocity. We, also, we get to engage in research. We get to you know, walk into their offices without an appointment and say, hey, look, I really don't understand stats. My stats prof is standing, right, sitting right there. And uh, I think it's so important to understand qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods, and participatory research if you want to work in health research. So I would add to that, a lot of our research, yes, we have a strong community within our department, but the research itself is also very community-based. So I echo what you're saying in terms of your rationale for wanting to study in the department. And then to kind of 
go on on your point about postgraduate opportunities, it is true that quite a number of our graduates do go on to study um, health professions. So they go on to study medicine or nursing um, or other health professions careers. But there are also a number of other fields in which you can apply the skills that you learn um, in a PhD or a master's program in family medicine and primary care. That includes um, data analytics or data science, working in NGOs, having skills to then go on into entrepreneurship or health um, innovation, health technology, um, and consulting. And also a number of our program graduates go on to do um, work in government as well. You're muted. Okay, I know. <laughs> okay, our next program we're going to hear from is human genetics, and Peyton McClelland is going to give you, and Zachary Santel are going to give you a bit of information. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so to start, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about the programs with the Department of Human Genetics. Sorry, I'm Peyton. I'm a PhD candidate in human genetics and co-president of the Human Genetics Student Society. Um, and within the human genetics program, we have... Um, a couple of options. So there's the master's program, uh, the thesis option, which would be, you know, doing research under a supervisor with a lab. Um, uh, similarly, a PhD thesis uh, option. Uh, and then also the um, course-based non-thesis uh, master's program, which is a clinical program in genetic counseling. And then the option for uh, a joint uh, collaborative effort or collaborative PhD in genomic medicine between uh, McGill University and the University of Kyoto. Hi, everyone. So I'm, I'm also the co-president of the Human Genetics Student Society, and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Human Genetics. And so our department has more than 80 possible labs across state-of-the-art research institutes in Montreal that are affiliated with McGill, um, and we have the opportunity to do wet lab research, bioinformatics, as well as clinical research. And many of the labs um, have the opportunity to give their students expertise in all of those, those domains. And so our, our department is where a lot of the cutting edge research in genetics and genomics is taking place. There's opportunities for interdisciplinary and translational research, as well as courses in human genetics and beyond. And there's a lot of funding support to go to conferences, workshops, as well as internship opportunities. And then of course, our department um, has the, the best voted graduate student society uh, two years in a row. Uh, we host a lot of fun social events as, as well as a lot of academic events. And, and we try to support our students the best we can. Next slide, please. And so there are many career opportunities in human genetics that our students go on to. Um, so there's scientist and researcher opportunities, opportunities in clinical genetics, as well as policy and regulation. And then there's many specialist roles, such as bioinformaticians and scientific writers and editors, as well as jobs in management and business. Yeah, so we have a very diverse um, student cohort. Um, a great group of students and our incoming uh, admissions cohort this year was 50% international. Uh, we have about 40% PhD students, 30% master's thesis students, and 5% uh, master's genetic counseling students, as well as postdoctoral fellows and other types of trainees. Uh, you can see the deadlines for admission here for um, international and Canadian uh, citizens. And yeah, please come chat with us afterwards. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about the Department of Human Genetics. Okay, thanks Peyton and Zach. So our next program we're gonna hear from is in the Institute of Health Sciences Education. And the speaker is Miriam Wagner and Dr. Linda Snell. So uh, Miriam and I will be speaking together. I'll start. I'm uh, Linda Snell, Professor of Medicine and Health Sciences Education. Next one, please. Uh, <clears throat> we have two graduate programs under us. The first is a graduate certificate of the Foundations of Health Sciences Education. So who is it for? 
if you are a health professional of any kind, you could be a vet, you could be a dentist, a nurse, whatever, and you are for some reason interested in health sciences education. For instance, you've been asked to take on uh, chairing a curriculum, being a program director or something else like that, or you're just interested in getting into the area, this is the program for you. The program is also available uh, to senior healthcare learners like senior residents and also, also to health sciences educators teaching at a university, for instance, uh, somebody teaching in a physiology program. The program is a certificate program. It is deregulated. It is 11 months long with three weeks only on site, two in the summer and one in February. The rest of it is a blended program, primarily asynchronous um, with uh, lots of uh, online learning. The reason for it uh, being structured like this is that it's available to people who are already health professionals and actually already have a day job. Could I have the next one, please? Uh, what can you do with it when you're finished? Well, as I kind of alluded to, you will be ready for all kinds of education leadership uh, positions uh, in a university or in policy making, change management in health uh, professions and health sciences education. As well, this will provide the necessary foundation should you decide to go on and get uh, further uh, training either as a master's degree or a PhD. Uh, you can get further information as we can uh, see on the link here and we'll be happy to talk about it a bit later on in those breakout groups. Marianne, do you want to go on? Next slide, please. Absolutely. So I'd like to talk about our PhD program also at the Institute of Health Sciences Education. Um, and at the IHSC, we really aim to build a community of learners for learning. And so if you're interested in pursuing a doctoral program, um, and we have many students right now across all types of disciplines, um, we really aim to provide a program for you that merges the theoretical aspects of health sciences education, but you also have the opportunity to engage not just with education scientists, but many clinician researchers to really be able to see the application of whatever it is you're, you're, you aim to study or you, you're interested in in health sciences education and its application to the context of health sciences. Um, and so the, the program involves both taking courses as well as a comprehensive exam, and there's different options for your thesis. And uh, next slide, please. And of course, at the end of it all, you want a job and, and certainly an academic career is one of your options, but you can also work as an educator in the healthcare system, you can work in policy, you can work as a consultant, and those are just a few of the career opportunities um, that are available to you. And our next slide just highlights the fact that we'll be in the, in the Zoom room and two of our um, current PhD students will be joining us there. So. If you're interested in hearing more, please join us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next program we're going to hear from is the Medical Physics Unit, and uh, Shereen Enger, with, will be, who's a graduate program director, will be giving us some information about that. Thank you, Amy, for the introduction. Um, so in our program, we are CAMPEP accredited, and CAMPEP um, is an organization with the mission of the Commission on Accreditation of Medical Physics Education Programs. Uh, it makes sure that the um, degrees that we are providing are consistent across North America. Uh, so it's US, Canada, Mexico, as well as Ireland. Uh, can you go back one slide, please? Oh, I don't know who is, yes. So we have a master's thesis for, that, that is two years. Um, a master's degree with, with thesis, PhD program. Three years, we have a graduate diploma from people who have PhDs, but would like to work as a medical physicist. Uh, they can study our courses for one year, but they don't have to do the thesis, so it's a certificate. And then we have a medical physics residency, and that is two years. So if you have our um, degree, then you can work as a medical physicist um, in most of the hospital across North America and uh, some of European countries. Yes. Please, next. 
Um, our field is very interdisciplinary and technology heavy. Uh, we work with medical imaging, artificial intelligence now is big uh, in oncology, but I would say in medicine in general. Uh, we work with radiation, so radiotherapy is our domain, uh, radiation dosimetry, radiation biology. We develop devices, medical devices, both for imaging and therapy. Uh, we develop novel treatment techniques, um, radiation oncology informatics, uh, anything that has to do with radiotherapy and its side effects. Yes, next. Um, so we use um, physics, um, medicine, biology, scientific computing, mathematics, artificial intelligence, and engineering um, uh, to improve the health of our wow. patients. Um, and in our field, we use linear accelerator, brachytherapy. Um, we use complex treatment planning software. Again, um, nowadays we're trying to automate everything with artificial intelligence and then all types of imaging modalities from x-rays to ultrasound, lasers. We use laser to position our patients uh, in treatment mode and so on. So next, please. Um, uh, so what does a medical physicist do? We have a wide range of um, um, professions that we end up in. We can work in medical, technical, and administrative uh, administrative staff, working with patients. We conduct research, develop and evaluate new analytical techniques. We develop new treatment modalities, imaging and delivery system, plan and ensure safe and accurate treatments for our patients. Uh, we create new system to investigate medical conditions in patients. If a new technology comes to the market, um, we do quality assure it before uh, we can use them on patients. So we do a lot of quality assurance um, testing, provide advice about radiation protection to different organizations such as the government. We train and update healthcare, scientific and techni um, technical staff, manage radiotherapy, quality assurance programs. We do mathematical modeling, maintain equipment, write report, teach, and we have plenty of management roles. So ne next, please. Um, at McGill, we have um, a presence at the Department of Physics and Biomedical Engineering. Our PhD program is run under the Department of Physics and uh, Biomedical Engineering. Um, we are located at our two teaching hospitals, so MUHC and the Jewish General Hospital. Our entire programs are uh, located, board lab and teaching are at the hospitals. We have collaboration with the MNI. Um, and some collaborations with the physics and, and biomedical engineering. Yes, that was it. So if you if you uh, like to apply, our deadlines are 15th of January. That's it. Thank you. Our next program that you're going to hear from is microbiology and immunology, and Chiro Piccarillo will be presenting that. He's the graduate program director. Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to all uh, special guest students from all over and to my colleagues. Uh, my name is Chiro Picciarello. I'm the Graduate Program Director for Microbiology Immunology, and uh, Dr. Sam Grunheide is the chair of our department. Um, our department is actually very fun, um, very popular, and highly engaging for students. But what exactly is microbiology immunology? I think the pandemic has taught us a fantastic lesson of the relevance of these two sciences. Understanding microbes, their origins, their genetics, their physiology, and their capacity to cause disease. And the immune system, the study of immunology is the study of the immune system, the mechanisms by which we are capable of defending ourselves to mount appropriate responses to eradicate those infections and downstream diseases. And so we really uh, provide um, an outstanding internationally recognized graduate program that provides students with top-notch academic background, technical and technological expertise, uh, professional development, which includes um, EDI considerations, uh, as well as ethics, as well as a variety of uh, career uh, development um, um, paths that we provide our students. Our students typically find themselves in a variety of career opportunities, classic academia, of course, a variety of hospital work, government, industry, 
patient engagement, clinical uh, research um, organizations, scientific communications, and education. Next slide. Well, who exactly are we and what are we composed of? Well, our department is uh, composed of 62 faculty members, uh, each asking some really important questions, fundamental questions or questions related to clinical matters and actual disease and actual patients in microbiology, immunology, virology, the study of viruses, and parasitology, as would be the case for a variety of diseases in tropical medicine. Our program um, consists of approximately 80 graduate students going down either MSc or PhD academic paths. And our department, our various research laboratories are located, while the central office is located downtown in the Lyman Duff Medical Building, a vast majority of researchers and clinical laboratories are located in six locations um, across all research uh, institutes um, and hospitals. In addition to all of this, we are really quite um, fortunate and very, very proud of the extraordinary um, enthusiasm and creativity of our uh, graduate student leadership, which really provide our incoming students and resident students with a variety of social events, of course, and professional development um, opportunities. Next slide. If any of you have an interest in applying to our department, I urge you to uh, seek this information in the um, web link you see at the bottom of the slide or email our graduate coordinating staff. All of these emails will come to me, so I may actually be the one e emailing you, but most importantly, come to the breakout sessions and I'll spend as much time as needed to answer each and every one of your questions. Lastly, if you take a look at the, the table here, you'll note the key um, application deadlines as it relates to international students, our Canadian residents, and other domestic applicants, our permanent residents. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you in the breakout sessions. Thanks, Joe. Our next program is the uh, graduate programs in the Ingram School of Nursing and Sonia Semenek, the Associate Professor and Director in the, of the graduate program, PhD program will be presenting. Oh, and Stephanie Charbonneau. So hi, I will start off the presentation. My name is Stephanie Charbonneau. I'm the Program Director of the Master of Science Applied Nursing Program. So as you can see on the screen, uh, the Ingram School of Nursing do offer four different graduate programs. Next slide, please. So first off, I want to talk about the Master of Science Applied Nursing, which is an entry to practice program. Uh, it's a unique program in Canada, and it's for non-nursing bachelor's degree to become a master's prepared nurse in three years. Um, um, it's a three-year program, as I said. There is two concentrations. Either students have to choose with advanced practice nursing or global health. And as you can see, oh, sorry, can you go back? As you can see, students are exposed to a variety of different clinical settings. Uh, you can see the number of hours. Next slide, please. There are also the Master of Science Applied Advanced Nursing, which is Bachelor's Prepared Nurses. Um, again, there's three concentration to choose. So either advanced practice nursing, nursing services administration concentration, or global health. It's a two-year program, full-time, or three to four-year part-time program. And we do have the Master of Science Applying Nursing Practitioner. So the ENP program, as we call it, it's a... Uh, Either you can do it part-time or full-time. And we are proud to say that we are we have the five concentrations. So we do offer the five uh, concentration, primary care, neonatal, pediatric, mental health, or adult care. Um, I will now let my colleague, Dr. Sonia Semenik, present the PhD program.
Uh, Dr. Simenek, are you there? Sorry just, for the pause, we'll be right back. Okay, see, I'm just gonna look. I don't see her anymore in the participants. Okay, so maybe we'll, do you wanna present anything, Stephanie, or do you want to? Uh... Um, can we come back to it? I'm not okay. too familiar. Okay, with so we'll- the PhD program, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, oh. I just spoke to Sonia, her electricity went down. <laughs> okay. <So> she... <laughs> Danielle, can you own... speak, do you wanna to speak to this program or? No, I'm from another program. I'm from okay. psychiatry. Okay, friends. sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm sure you don't want to speak to that. Okay, so I'm going to apologize Definitely to everybody. present the rest. Well, I, I can present. Uh, okay. I'll read what the slide says. So it's the doctoral program in nursing. It's a four-year program. Um, it's um, you Here you can see that uh, the minimum GPA to be accepted, it's a 3.3 out of 4. First, you have to do a master's degree in nursing or other field. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, important uh, note here, the application deadline for 24-25 uh, for international students is January 1st and for Canadian students, it's March 1st. The PhD program is a minimum of 18 credits. It's either a four to five year program. Uh, you do have the option to enroll part-time during the coursework and here are the required courses. Next slide. We will be hosting a breakout room. So hopefully Sonia will join. If ever you have questions, you can join and I can uh, keep you, uh, I can give her, give you, sorry, her email address. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, our next program that we're gonna hear from is oncology. Uh, program with uh, Luke McCaffrey, the Graduate Program Director, presenting. Hi, um, thanks, Amy, for the introduction. Um, so I'm the Graduate Program Director for the um, Diploma in Oncology Program. So this is a one-year program um, with 30 credits. Um, it's a, a program where we, where we have a, num a variety of students um, that come in and really the purpose of this program is to give students a wide variety, um, a wide understanding of cancer um, and all aspects of cancer from basic research through um, some of the clinical um, aspects of it. So students enrolling in the program as a cohort have a number of courses that are common between all students. So this would be things like fundamentals of oncology and cancer research, um, best practices in biomedical research, and then students are able to choose an area of focus where they can specialize in one of these four topics. And so one of them is population and global cancer control. So that includes things like cancer epidemiology prevention, principles of public health practice. Second area of focus is so psychosocial oncology and palliative care. Um, so again, this includes psychosocial oncology and qualitative and psychosocial health research. Third area of focus is clinical cancer research. Um, so this focuses a lot on the principles and practice of clinical trials. And the fourth area of focus is cancer care services and quality. So in addition to the courses, um, students participate in a practicum. So this is 120 hours where they gain real life experience in a research. And this can be across any of these um, research topics that, that our faculty are involved in. Um, next slide. So students at the end of their, their practicum, they have the opportunity to present their work at, at a research day that includes um, research from all um, trainees within the program, medical residents, um, as well as masters and, and uh, PhD students. And so the requirements for this program are um, a minimum CGPA of, of 3.3 out of four and a bachelor's degree uh, in a related field. Um, the deadlines for international students are January 15th, and then Canadian applicants are later um, June 1st. So I've provided a link here if anyone's interested to get more information. We'll also be present in the breakout rooms to answer any questions you have. 
Thanks, Luke. Our next program that we're going to hear from is otolaryngology, and Dr. Bernard Siegel, the graduate program director, will speak to you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. So my name is Bernard Siegel. I'm the graduate program director of the Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. We offer a Master of Science program. Our students are physicians, dentists, therapists, and those with a bachelor degree. Next slide, please. We're a special department. We're a clinical department. We focus on the patient. You will rub shoulders with physicians, residents who are training to become full ear, nose, and throat to doc doctors and other graduate students. We're highly interdisciplinary and we aim to have supervisors who are both clinicians and basic scientists. We're a small department. There will be a lot of one-on-one -on -one with your supervisors and other collaborators. And because we're small, we can support later application deadlines. Next slide, please. One is a, what is otolaryngology head and neck sur surgery? Well, it's the study of the normal function and disease of the many complex interrelated structures that you find inside your head and neck. There's the brain, you eat, you breathe. There are those six senses, touch, smell, sight, vision, hearing, and the sixth sense. Well, that's intuition. It's the sense of where you are in a room. And like everything in life, you don't really appreciate some things until they're gone. And we work on helping people who lose these various normal capabilities that we don't think about. Next slide, please. So we're doing research in ver various areas. We're developing better cancer treatments, which are leading to personalized medicine, which aim to treat a particular patient with a particular disease. We have a new cochlear implant program where we're treating younger and younger patients and to have better hearing. We're working on developing better surgical outcomes, for example, better voice and better breathing. We're working on helping people with the dysfunction of their vestibular system, diagnosis and treatment so that they over can overcome that disease. And we're helping clinicians better learn how to treat their patients safely. Our graduates get better positions in medicine and dentistry, better positions in therapy and vets. They work in clinical research and they work in industry. Next slide, please. If you have any questions, next slide. Please visit us uh, in the breakout room or at the webs at this web link or contact us by email. Thank you so much. Our next program is the Pathology Graduate Program, and it's going to be presented by Edith Ricca, who's the Graduate Program um, and study, Postdoctoral Studies Director. Next slide, please. Thank you. So pathology is the study of disease. That's the definition of the, of the entire field. And because it's the study of disease, we have two branches of pathology. We have a basic science branch, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight. And we also have a branch of uh, medicine. So we have clinical uh, pathologists in our hospitals who are diagnosing uh, disease. So um, we've jumped ahead to the first slide here. And so this is the, the main focus. Uh, these are, our, oh, can you go back please? Thank you. So these are our graduate students. We are a medium sized department. We have about 30 something graduate students every year. And uh, they have the opportunity to interact both uh, with the, they're in our basic science labs, but they can also interact with some of the cl clinicians in our hospitals. Uh, next slide. So our graduate program design, uh, as all of the departments, I think in, in our faculty, we have a personalized advisory committee with four people for every single student. And because we're not a huge department, we can pay a lot of attention. Go back, please. We can pay a lot of attention to to every student and so they they um we make sure that they go through their their training uh with a lot of help and guidance we also have um graduate courses where uh, we focus on particular topics that are relevant to disease but are also relevant to the world at the present time such as climate uh, change a global disease and developing vaccines uh, and we have an, uh, a course that focuses on cell biology, which of course is, is relevant to all of this. And uh, so uh, if you go to the next slide, 
Next, yeah, that's it. We also have a uh, course that covers all of the basic concepts of pathology that we give here at McGill. So if you're if you're from McGill and planning to become a graduate student in pathology, we recommend you take this ahead of time or if go back, please. Or if you're from another uh, university, find a similar uh, course if you're an undergraduate still and, and take it because this is something you'll, you'll, um, you'll have to take in uh, one way or another to become familiar with the, the field in general. Next. And we focus on communication in our graduate courses. Uh, we have research seminars that students are, are giving uh, every uh, so often. We also encourage them to do poster presentations, to go to meetings. Um, and so we prepare them to be at ease speaking in public so that they are well equipped to th defend their thesis if they're a PhD student and also to, to uh, have job interviews and perform well once they do get a job next. So here are some of our research directors, and they um, some of them are in our Lyman Duff building, but then they're in research institutes and hospitals all over the McGill University Connections. And we have many clinical collaborations, uh, as you can imagine, because of the nature of our work. And uh, so we have a lot of enthusiastic directors and a lot of happy graduate students. So you can see all of the types of projects that we're studying on our website and you can see the different uh, directors and, and uh, so on. Next. So a few things that people are always interested in, you do not need to find a research supervisor ahead of time. If you're a McGill student or you're around here, you can come and meet people and you can find a research director ahead of time. But if you're from another location, then uh, you can uh, apply, you can be approved by our committee, and then we will try and we will find um, a match for you that that meets your interests and also uh, a research director who is interested in taking you as a student. You do need, obviously, a solid academic record in a biomedical science to apply to our program. And research experience, if you've done a, a research course or a summer lab work, is a big advantage. Uh, funding is guaranteed uh, if you become a graduate student. And our experimental pathology unit provides direct links between our research labs and clinical medicine. So all of this is on our website. Next. And we have a phenomenal research day every year where uh, people, um, all our students give posters or give uh, talks. And uh, we have a, a wonderful evening and a dinner and uh, celebrate uh, our event. Next. And just to give you an idea of what you can do with a graduate degree in pathology, here are a few of our graduates. You can see they've gone on for, to postdoctoral fellowships or to medical school. It prov provides a good background for medical school. They are, they are, I don't know why it's jumping around like this. They are uh, university professors. Uh, they are working in government agencies like uh, uh, CIHR or um, NIH in the U.S., they're working in industry, and you can see that one of them, uh, one of our graduates is a, a vice president for Moderna. So you have many, many options with a degree in pathology. It prepares you for a lot of different possibilities. Next. And we have a very strong pathology graduate student society that we work with. Uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, graduate school should be enjoyable. You should make friends, uh, have an enjoyable experience, as well as learning how to do research and to prepare yourself for a future career. Next. So all of the information is on our website, and you can see the deadlines to apply. Next. So we look forward to seeing you in the breakout room, and you can also contact us on our website or by email and find out everything that you'd like to know about being a graduate student in pathology. Thank you. Thank you. Our next program is physiology, and Maurice Chacron, the graduate program director, is going to tell us a bit about it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Amy, for the introduction. So I'm Maurice Chacron. I'm the graduate program director for the uh, Department of Physiology graduate program. Can you advance the slide, please? So our graduate, we have a very diverse uh, department where researchers work in a variety of fields. 
uh, ranging from cellular and molecular physiology towards studying the brain, neurophysiology, immunology, and cancer, as well as a very strong component towards applying mathematical models towards understanding physiological problems. That's quantitative physiology. Uh, next slide. So we have, this is done via various physiology facilities, such as cell information systems, advanced bioimaging facilities, Center for Applied Mathematics and Biosciences and Medicine. And we're also affiliated with multiple centers, including the Allen Edwards Center for Research on Pain, the Rosalind and Morris Goodman Cancer Research Center, as well as the McGill University Research Center on Complex Traits. Next slide. So we have two programs. One is a master's program. The other one is a PhD program. You can see the deadlines. Um, the uh, requirements are essentially for our master's program is a BSc or an equivalent with a CGPA of 3.2. And for PhD, it will be an MSc or an equivalent with a CGPA uh, of 3.2. And it's important to understand that it doesn't your BSc or MSc does not have to necessarily be in the biomedical sciences to be accepted in our graduate program. We take graduate students with a variety of backgrounds, including mathematics, physics, engineering, biology, uh, and so on and so forth. So as long as you're interested in studying physiology, it, you don't really need a physiology degree to, to get in into our graduate program. It's important to understand also that supervisors not require the time of application. We will try to help you find one, but it's of course essential for the final admission uh, to the program. Uh, next slide. So essentially all graduate students in our program have a minimum stipend of $21,183 for living expenses. And then we will cover uh, tuition fees, either from supervisors grants or from other funds. Um, so you will all, everyone is covered. We have various uh, entrance scholarships uh, that uh, students can, can apply for as well. Next slide. And the question is, what can you do with a degree in physiology? And the answer is quite a lot uh, when we can have, you know, traditional academic settings. So one of our graduates, uh, Dr. Gil Bubb, is now a faculty member in our department. But several of our graduates have gone on to non-academic careers, including Valerie Walker, who's now a vice president of talent and skills at Business Council of Canada, Noor Malek, who's an air medical writer, Christine Antouche, who's a study director in the pharmaceutical industry, Diane Colisa, who's also in the pharmaceutical industry. But you can also go into medicine. So for example, Kevin Pacheca uh, is now the chief of the Department of Neurosurgery at the MNI, or you can even go into art. And one of our MSc students, Kelly Bullock, uh, is actually uh, started her own company uh, doing scientific illustration. Uh, next slide. So our graduate program, we have very strong interaction between the department and the Graduate Association of Physiology, GAP. So it, uh, this association represents physiology graduate students as well as postdoctoral fellows. Um, it's very well run. They have a variety of activities that are a lot of fun, including the Fridays at Four Mixer between students and faculty, uh, technical seminars where uh, they'll invite a speaker to talk about a particular technique. Uh, journal clubs, annual ski trip, uh, annual holiday parties, fundraisers, and charity events from the Montreal community. Uh, next slide. And uh, so questions. So I'll be in the breakout room, and I'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. And you can also contact our graduate program coordinator, Jennifer Rondeau, or uh, myself, the graduate program director as well. Thank you. it again. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and now we'll move on to uh, psychiatry and uh, Dr. Danielle Grolo, uh, the Associate Graduate Program Connect, uh, excuse me, the Associate Graduate Program Director um, will be presenting this evening. Thank you, Emma. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here tonight to speak a bit about our program. Uh, so we do have a master's and PhD program in mental health, which is highly multidisciplinary. Um, our department, the Department of Psychiatry, has a very rich history of leadership 
and many different areas of psychiatry. We were the first North American, uh, that's where the first North American clinical trials uh, for antipsychotics was done. Uh, there's very different uh, examples. We are the um, we are the number one international leader in social and transcultural psychiatry. Uh, the, in our department, the role of serotonin in low mood uh, with antidepressant and treatment augmentation strategies was also developed. And we're very strong also um, in the area of epigenetic factors uh, and stress uh, responsiveness and uh, uh, in the area of depression and suicide. So we have a huge number of potential supervisors who are very active and internationally recognized uh, researchers at different sites. There's the Douglas, there's the Jewish Hospital, there's the Ludmer, um, and the, um, of course, uh, McGill University um, Hospital. So um, you can change slides, please. So um, we have in our Department of Psychiatry the only Canadian multidisciplinary PhD program in mental health that we launched uh, just at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. So uh, our PhD program has uh, three different streams. One stream is in mental health service and policy. The other one is in social and cultural psychiatry. And the last one is in uh, translational and clinical psychiatry. Um, so all students uh, registered in the PhD program need to participate in two mandatory courses. One is in the history and philosophy of psychiatry and the other is uh, an advanced course in, um, on mental illness. Uh, however, uh, because it's so diverse in our department, uh, students will work with their supervisor and their supervisory committee to find, uh, to choose other courses that will complement their training. So of course, like other departments in medicine, we have um, uh, we have very good uh, funding, and uh, with internal fellowships, students that apply need to be accepted by a supervisor that will commit to fund them, and they will guide the students to find internal funding from the department, internal from McGill, also as well as external scholarships very competitive scholarships. So a lot of our students uh, end up winning these scholarships. Next slide, please. So the requirement uh, requirements and deadlines. So for the master degree, you need uh, an undergraduate degree, of course, um, and you need a strong background either in science or social science, uh, depending on which stream that you choose. Um, and you need to demonstrate strong academic achievement um, equivalent to a CGPA of 3.3 on four or a GPA of 3.5 on four for the last two years of full-time studies. Um, you need to have a confirmed supervisor. So I strongly encourage you to contact our department so that we can put you in contact with potential supervisors that would fit with your area of interest. And um, you need also to have a confirmed stipend uh, by your supervisor or having one uh, scholarship uh, that will give you a minimum stipend. So the deadlines for fall 2024 admissions are January 15th for international applicants and April 15th for Canadian applicants. So I really hope that some of you will be interested in our program. And um, Cindy Louis, who, who is the coordinator of graduate studies in our department, will be present in the breakout room. So between her and me, we should be able to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next uh, graduate program is one of our interfaculty programs, Quantitative Life Science, and it's going to be uh, presented by Frederick Richard. Thank you. Yes, uh, so I'm uh, Frank Shah. I'm a professor in the Department of Biology and a member of the uh, Quantitative Life Science Program. So this is a PhD program that is still fairly recent. I, I believe it is in its sixth or seventh years. And um, it was really designed, so it's across the Faculty of Medicine and Science, you know, and was really designed to break traditional research boundaries. It has in mind students who have a background a background in quantitative science, and I mean by this so math, stats, computer science, physics, and, and others, and who are interested in addressing and solving biological problems, and especially 
by having a very broad um, a broad um, approach to biological problems across levels of bio biological organizations, right? Really from the molecules to whole ecosystems. And to achieve this, so that program um, is gathering, is putting together over 90 researchers that are from different disciplinary departments, disciplinary units, and they and to create that integration in that program, this, the PhD students will rotate in three labs um, from quantitative fields or biology during the first year. And at the end of their first year, they get to choose a supervisor and a, and a thesis to topic. Um, and that's where the actual um, research starts. And so there is a guaranteed funding aligning with um, what other programs are doing at McGill. Um, next slide, please. So the um, the requirements for that program, so the, the, the overview of the program itself, the sequence is, as I mentioned, that first year of rotation where students can, based on their research interests, the gaps in there, given their research interests, what gaps in knowledge they have, what supervisors they might be interested in working with. So you pick three, three labs where you do a, a research project um, that lasts one semester. And in, during that year, you also have this foundational course that is meant to create a, um, um, an environment for all students to get together, to learn from, uh, to get examples of quantitative approaches that are applied at each level of biological organization from molecular biology to ecology. So it's by module where we have boot camps also to uh, train students in different quantitative computational and quantitative tools. All students are together in their first year uh, going through that course. And then there's an additional nine credits of complementary courses that can be taken during the thesis that are more targeted by the student uh, committee to serve their, again, gaps in knowledge and to specialize in their areas of research. As with all programs, the PhD programs, there is a compre comprehensive exam that is a, an important milestone, of course, the thesis. And the program benefits from uh, many also interdisciplinary activities, uh, workshops, um, meeting, uh, meetings, so uh, a lot of uh, groups that are um, meeting to uh, help each other with different quantitative approaches and biological problems and seminars. And the physical space that the program offers is really meant to create a community of students working across disciplines and across biological levels of organization, helping each other. And they can do their actual lab work or research work in different units uh, with their supervisors and co-supervisors because co-supervisions are become very common in that in that program. The requirement, but we uh, the students who are coming to this program should have a background in qu quantitative fields, including so calculus, algebra, uh, comp uh, computer sciences. So some program, some some background in those areas, and some demonstrated interest in biology, either through courses or a research experience in biology. So that that's the student we students we have in mind with, with this program. And if you want to apply, you have the typical documents that are required, so CV and statements matters of reference and transcripts. Um, next slide, please. And so, because this is um, kind of broad programs, there might be uh, many questions uh, that we can answer. So we are organizing a some info sessions. So, so we have one on October 31st and they are in person and one online on November 14th, if you're interested. So I will be in the breakout room with our uh, program coordinator, Alex de Guise, uh, in, a, in a minute, because we're co go coming to the end, I believe. We Thank are. You. We thank, we thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Right. Okay, so our next uh, two more to go, and then we'll be, I have a couple words to say, and we'll go to the breakout rooms. So our next program is Surgical and Interventional Science, and uh, Muskan Alad, a PhD student in the program, will be giving the presentation. Thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Muskan Alad, and I'm a PhD student in Surgical and Interventional Science Department. So what is surgical and intervention science? It is actually research of McGill's Department of Surgery, and we offer a lot of programs. Next slide, please. I can do it. Okay. So we offer graduate level training program, as you can see there in surgical research that leads to PhD, master's degree, as well as diploma or certificate in surgical innovation. Now, uh, the PhD and master's thesis program have been long being recognized as one of the strongest in Canada. 
And at the master's level, in addition to the core streams, we have experimental surgery stream. You, uh, we also have, uh, you may also have opportunities to choose from different concentrations in surgical innovation, surgical education, global surgery, surgical outcome, and digital health innovation. Or you can also have, uh, or you can also do the non-thesis master's options is also available. Now, just to give you an idea about these streams, they actually range from learning how to be to be an entrepreneur to improving healthcare for patients, not only in Canada, but across around all the world. It is it starts from basic translation and applied research in the areas like epidemiology, surgical general surgery, oncology, and many more. They are listed there. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, we have research labora uh, labs at multiple sites like Jewish General Hospital, Glen, Montreal General, and many more. Uh, so, in terms of the application, you may ask how you can apply. So, for that, you will require uh, to uh, fill an online application form with with an applicable um, with an application fee. Then we look up for the transcript and now for the department or the master's and the uh, PhD degree application, you need reference letter or confirmation of supervisor and project proposal and your C uh, CV and letter of understanding. And if applicable, you may also need TOEFL, IELTS and GR results along with the letter of intent. This is not uh, like... The confirmation of supervisor and project proposal is not needed for non-thesis students. There is, uh, for thesis students and PhD, there is also a possibility of interview and uh, uh, the deadlines are written there below. We hope you can apply before that and we look forward to seeing you. Additionally, just to let everyone know that we also have a very uh, strong student committee and you can check out all the activities we do at our Experimental Surg uh, Surgery Graduate Student Society. And we do many events uh, which are social as well as academic. And if you have any questions, these are our excellent administrator. You can contact them anytime and uh, with any questions, and we look forward to seeing you in experimental surgery department. And also we will be in the waiting room uh, to answer any questions. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Ms. Ken. So last but not least of our programs, um, Miriam Tabrizian, the graduate program director from biological and biomedical engineering thesis program will now give us a, a brief overview of their program. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Mariam Tabrizian. I am going to be the uh, director of graduate program as of November 1st. So uh, uh, that uh, I'm going to present the, the program Biological and Biomedical Engineering. So it is an interfaculty program between Faculty of Engineering and Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Uh, so as the name says, uh, the, it is a very multidisciplinary program uh, that, you know, as interface of the physical sciences, uh, life sciences, engineering, uh, and clinical practice. So, and we have, uh, the department has uh, uh, very, uh, the faculty member, they are coming from this field and they are really uh, on the, uh, how the edges of the innovation in this field. And uh, so they, uh, as, uh, as we, uh, it is written on the uh, slide. So we do uh, innovation and groundbreaking projects with class for researchers in our uh, department uh, in the topic ranging from molecular and cellular engineering to signal system and computational modeling. So, and it is important to mention that uh, it is the first biomedical engineering department in Canada founded in uh, 89. So, uh, and now we have other uh, universities that they have the same program, but uh, McGill was the first one. So, and we learned a lot, uh, you know, how to run this program, how to recruit the students, how to uh, recruit the, uh, the uh, really the, um, the high quality and uh, world uh, known researchers in our program. Next slide, please. 
Uh, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, because I have on the, uh, could you back? Okay, so uh, now uh, the offer, I, I think that you have heard about one of our program, non-thesis uh, non program. Uh, I'm just going to cover the master uh, of science that we, we offer as well as the, the, the PhD program. And you have, it's for sure, you can find a lot of pro, uh, the, you know, conditions, uh, the uh, criteria on our website that you are going to see next slides. But uh, it is important to uh, underline that we accept any, for, uh, you know, um, uh, the student from different degree, as, as mentioned, it is a multidisciplinary program. And we, we have a student coming from different background in engineering or science or a clinical researcher. So we uh, we accept almost all of them uh, if they are um, a kind of, you know, they meet the program criteria. Uh, and it is the same thing for uh, the doctor in uh, philosophy or PhD. So it for sure, it is obvious that they have to have a, a, a master in a related uh, field, but also, there is a possibility that, you know, if we don't, um, you can fast track if you are already in a master of science program in our department. So, uh, and though for those that they are missing uh, some kind of qualification or courses, we are, we have a very good uh, list of the uh, the uh, the courses that they can take, the student that they take uh, to gain uh, the uh, the knowledge for uh, that aspect of the that they are missing in their research and in their uh, uh, learning uh, process. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I think that in terms of career, um, we have almost everywhere our students, they are in academia, they are in government, and for sure in industry. Uh, I would say it is not in, in a kind of, it is not too much to say that m many of innovation in uh, different, uh, you know, uh, biomedical field, you can see always a biomedical engineer, engineer is in the background of this innovation. So uh, you need for application is for sure, uh, we have a lot of uh, applications and uh, we always, always suggest that you contact the supervisor first, find a supervisor that you can, you are interested in and the research program is interested, is, um, is of interest for you, <laughs> sorry. And after, uh, you know, we, we go through that mission process per uh, the uh, Miguel regulations. And also they are funding, we have a minimum stipend, we cover the stipend as uh, the, uh, the tuition fees for those students that are admitted in our program, uh, either with the, uh, for the, the supervisor funding or with other sources that uh, we, can, we can go and we can ask. Next slide, please. It was the last one. Uh, so uh, is the, uh, as I said, so they are, they are everywhere in terms of career. Uh, since we have just three minutes to talk, uh, they please uh, take a look to our website. It is very well done. You have examples of the project. You have all the supervisor. We have all the website. You have access to the website of supervisor. And uh, we are waiting for, uh, you know, to meet with you uh, also in um, the breakout room. If you have any question, the our administrator, you know, the uh, officer of the graduate program, Pina, the uh, Mrs. Pina Sorini is there also with me. So, and we are uh, we are eager to meet you and answer to your questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. You heard the enthusiasm. Just before we open the breakout rooms, I just want to make uh, just share a couple final slides. Um, just to sort of remind everybody that admissions to any of these programs is done through um, our graduate pro and postdoctoral study site. You do sort of a general admissions using the SLATE program. If you still don't know, after hearing all of these different talks and after visiting breakout rooms, you're still looking for more things, I want to share with you that McGill ha now has a, a new search engine that allows you to find different programs. And so if you go to this site, you pick, click find your program, 
you can enter a program and I just entered genetics here and you can see you'll get programs come up from human genetics, which you might expect, but also mental health, microbiology, microbiology and immunology. So other programs where you can study genetics. So that's a great tool to use if you're still sort of unsure about which department. And with that, just to remind you that, uh, as I said, applications go through the slate admissions slot and there's lots of useful tools from writing your letter of intent, from how to contact a supervisor. There's little videos that that they've put up. I advise you to take advantage of that and, and help that make your application process simpler. And with that, we're going to just open the breakout rooms. Before you do that, Yang, I just want to point, I'm going to stop sharing in a second. So please, we're setting it so that you can move freely between rooms. I would ask people from the programs um, to put under your name, like that you're with the program, either your graduate program director, that you're a graduate student, so that people coming into the room, it's clear. And then um, you will, for the people investigating the programs, you will be able to move in and out of the different Zoom rooms freely. And with that, we'll open it. I want to thank everybody for their attention. I want to thank our programs, um, our directors, our students, our professors who have shared tonight their enthusiasm for their programs. Thanks so much for doing that. And here we go. We're going to open the breakout rooms. And um, Yang and I will be remaining in the main room. So if anybody has any issues, you can come back here. Okay, so now all the rooms are open. Um... Does anybody have any problem seeing the rooms? Please let us know. <laughs> 